Hi. We're not live. We're not live. We're not here. Looks like we're live. I know it does. There's a chat. You guys are here. Yeah. We're not here, though. You're premiering it, right? So there will be a live chat. The, w this will be live, but we, we will won't be. We will not be live. I won't even be here. These chairs are empty they are right now, but empty. you're here, and that's what matters. <laughs> Happy Friday, guys. It's actually Thursday, but today we're recording the Friday Bean for you. Because we're going to be gone tomorrow and we're, Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, we're going to be gone. We're going to be at a festival. We are going to be unavailable. Um, but Completely unavailable. <laughs> completely unavailable. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but for those of you who joined the Alpha Holiday Boot Camp or if you're a Handmade Alpha Academy student, make sure you check your email if you're a Handmade Alpha Academy student because your access info is in there. Um, handmade Alpha... I guess it's not handmade. It's just no. Al Alpha Holiday Boot Camp starts on Monday. Mm -hmm. Monday, Monday. And that will hopefully be posted at midnight Eastern time because every day of the boot camp, those aren't live either. We know that it's a pain in the butt to make it live to places. We're not live right now. Nope. It, it would have been too much of a pain of, in a in in pain in the booty. pain of a butt for us to be here. Pain of a butt. So we recorded it, but we also recorded the boot camp. Um, you can watch it at any point. We're gonna load it in at midnight Eastern time every day. That way, you'll be able to watch it all day. Uh, mm -hmm. Replays will be available. Yada yada. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you already missed it, so <laughs> you won't be able, <laughs> you won't be able to get in. Um, but Handmade Alpha Academy which is our full Etsy big enchilada program will be opening on uh, December 1st. So mm -hmm. there should be a link down below for you to check out what that includes and the waiting list for that. And if you sign up for that, any of these future webinars that we do. Boot camps. Boot camps. So many different terms. Uh, you'll be able to have access to those. Any future ones for free. Yeah. The, those, are, those are included with your membership. They are included. So, yes, yes. yes. Um, yes, yes. Yes, yes. So today we're going to be critiquing your Instagram accounts. And we asked in the Handmade Alpha Facebook community, also linked down below if you want to mm -hmm. join that, for you to give us your accounts. Uh, we were pretty random with them. I will say that if you're selling stuff and it violates somebody's copyright, whether that be Disney or whatever, we... We're not going to mention names, but we didn't choose you guys. It's an automatic nope. Um, because we don't want people to watch this video and then get mad at you because you're selling things that you shouldn't. And then get mad at us for, yeah. Yeah. So We're just going to avoid that. No copyright content. Exactly. If there is copyright content and we missed it, yeah. we can't know everything, right? So. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're going to do our best. Um, a lot of these Instagram critiques, if you were not selected... First of all, if you were not selected, it doesn't mean that you had copyright things in your shop. There there were a lot of you. Yeah, there were a lot of shops. We kind of just picked them randomly. Yeah, we... A couple we, of them we picked on purpose for a specific example, but... Yeah, so we're going to go through them. We're going to share some tips. Even if we didn't pick you, um, it's nothing personal. We couldn't pick any or everybody. However, the things that you'll learn from these critiques can be applied to your Instagram account, even if we didn't pick you for today. Yes. So just... Keep watching. Take some notes. Um, yeah. So, Mr. Moore, do you want to? Yeah. Uh, let me get it pulled up. He oh, God. <laughs> Thank God it's not live. I'm still not cutting it out. It's staying in here. Yeah. Leave it in. Leave All it in. All right. We're we'll not... go ahead and screen share. We're in the top corner here. Well, I guess we can F11. They're already going to see it. Can make it bigger? No. You can. You can make it, you can make it real big. Look, you oh, can yeah. see Oh, yeah. You can see it up there. It's nice. Now we can see it. It's nice and big. Nice and big. All right, guys. So, um... You may take the reins, young lady. Heather, um, the first thing that I noticed about your Instagram account is this right here, this tagline, this should be keyword optimized. This should tell people exactly what your business is. So you've got Silversmith and Flamework Glass mm -hmm. Artist. Get rid of your name here. This isn't, I know it says nameplate, um, or I think it actually says name when you're editing your Instagram account. And mm -hmm. assuming that this is an Instagram business account or an Instagram creator account, even though it says name, since it's keyword optimizable, you want to make sure that you're getting some keywords in here. I'm going to be repeating this almost every single Instagram account. It's a very, it's a very consistent theme. So for example, mine, I believe says something like, Star Lamore's tips to grow on Etsy. 
So if somebody's searching for Etsy tips or something like that on Instagram, they might find Starla Moore's tips to grow on Etsy and follow me. Hopefully. So for you, I would make sure that I'm keyword optimizing for, um, you know, flamework glass artist. Or if you could get some keywords, uh, you know, that, that are searchable, maybe, you know, if there is better terminology. I don't know. I don't know your industry, but I would try to get some keywords in there. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Silversmith and Flamework Glass Artist, please visit my website or my Etsy. Take this out of here. You don't need that in there. You've got it right here. You don't need this in here. Um, your Etsy, this is not clickable. You don't need to have that because you already have your link in your bio right there. So you can say... It's just a waste of space. You could fit other stuff in there. Not to mention, if you wanted to, go to linktree.com, make one link... And that can host all of all of your stuff. Yeah, and we'll show you that a couple of other shops already have that. Yeah, yeah. So multiple links. Um, so rather than please visit my website, save yourself some space. Maybe put some emojis in here. Get some like little flame emojis that talk about what makes your product special. Draw the eyes. Exactly. Another thing that we noticed as we were scrolling through your pieces is that it looks like you are using a lamp. Um, like a table lamp. Yeah. So for the UV pieces, that's fine. But your lighting is not ideal. I see like this kind of orangish hue on all your photos. Your products w are better suited for outdoor photography. Mm -hmm. Out in the grass, outside. If you want to hold them in your hand... That's, that's totally fine. Yeah, that's fine as well. I actually prefer that for jewelry. That way I have a size reference. Yeah. If you're not going to use a banana for scale. Yeah, <laughs> banana for scale. But get outside and I, your products are beautiful. Mm -hmm. Your photos are not high quality, which means that it gives me the perception of the jewelry not being high quality. And The, re I, the resolution's fine. There's, there's absolutely yeah. nothing wrong with the products themselves. It's, it's definitely lighting. Yeah, um, 100%. We've got a lot of glare. Your your fingers are very overexposed. Mm -hmm. um, I just think that there is a lot more that you could be doing because your jewelry is super duper pretty. But I would love to see it more catered towards your mm -hmm. target audience, which I'm assuming you've got a more like earth friendly, um, boho hippie audience for your primary demographic. Where where are they hanging out? They're hanging out outside, mm -hmm. like they're under a tree. They're they're out you know, reading in the forest and dancing among the mushrooms. So and there's, and there's nothing particularly wrong with having just a strictly like business feed, either having just your products, but you could totally break it up with some lifestyle stuff here and there. Yeah. Because I've seen shops um, within your industry <clears throat> that have astronomical views on the reels. This, that's pretty, this, that's pretty decent. And it's because of the, the image itself. Yeah. The product is very front and center and obvious. These views for your products are insanely low for what you sell. Um, if I were to click on one of these. It, yeah. It's festival season. Yeah. People are shopping for this stuff right now. This is not a clickable link. Don't put links in these. Put, uh, click the link in my bio yeah, to link, shop. Just link in bio. Because if I go here and I'm like, wow, I want to buy this. Oh, this doesn't work. And I'm on my phone. I, I, there's yeah, no. Yeah, just click, just put link in bio to your, to your Etsy shop. Okay, so this was a slideshow. More mm -hmm. hand blown implosions available. All right, focus less on getting all these keywords in here or all these uh, hashtags. Um, Instagram isn't looking at hashtags as much anymore. It's not how you're going to get these reels found, get some keywords in the caption itself. So the sentences that you're writing about your products, this is where you want to optimize and get your keywords in. So write a nice, natural sounding uh, caption. Try to get in, you know, try to get in as many keywords as you can. Describe who it's for, what it's for, and so on. And then get, you know, if you can get 30 hashtags in there, cool. My reels that perform the best tend to only have five to seven. Well, and when you're when, when you're looking at them as well, like you're you're very literal with them. Some of them are are specific. You've got like art glass, 
hand blown jewelry, festival jewelry, that kind of stuff. But like then your lamp work, Etsy gifts, things that don't particularly have to do with this itself that people aren't going to be searching for. Yeah. So the more you can be on this and not worrying so much about getting everything else in here, just like she said, worry about getting more in the description and yeah. getting it easier for people to find. And yes, a couple years ago, getting as many hashtags as possible was the strategy. It's an outdated strategy now, though. It's even uh, Instagram themselves have said that this strategy is outdated. You don't need to worry mm -hmm. about getting all these. And it looks like this was eight weeks ago. So it's a while ago. Maybe you've already, you know, maybe you already know this, but yeah. yeah. So Oop. get get on that real strategy. Fix get, this top up. Fix that top. Get rid of that link in your bio. Work on those product photos. Get mm -hmm. outside. Get, get outside for your reels. Get outside for your product photography. And, um, and when, especially because you're selling glass, making sure that if you are going outside that the lighting is appropriate. Otherwise, it's just going to extremely overexpose everything. Yeah. You're going to get a lot of reflection, a lot of light getting blasted into your hands and all over the place. So make sure the lighting outside is decent. If you've got a nice cloudy day, like a day before it rains or a day after it rains when it's just kind of that mucky fall kind of outside weather. Yeah. Um, that's perfect for, for any kind of jewelry, especially glass. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and go to the next account. The first accounts we always spend a lot more time on just because... Um, We're getting the first points out of the way, but a lot of the times it's the same crap over and over and over again. So. The same crap. <laughs> it's, 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 easy, it's easy mistakes. Everybody's a beginner at some point, right? Everybody has something to learn. Yeah. So it's, we're not saying that your Instagram is crap. No, it's the same crap points that Instagram likes. It's, Ex exactly. It's the same things over and over again. So we don't, we don't like beating a dead horse. Mm-hmm. All right. This one I really liked. I, I like this shop. Boop. We'll go ahead and pop it open here. All right. Dark Lodge. This is uh, one of our Handmade Alpha Academy students. Mm -hmm. um, very, very good, consistent aesthetic here going for the, um, you know, books that are in the public domain, older books, kind of having that nice dark academia theme. Mm -hmm. It's very obvious what your branding colors are. Of all of your photos, if you scroll over and look at your engagement... On your photos, this one has fantastic engagement. This one has fantastic Great engagement. engagement. Um, but then if we scroll up, you have a qu you have quite a few in here that don't have the best engagement in comparison. This one has decent engagement for that reel. Mm -hmm. um, but I can see a trend on what's doing well. So one thing that we were talking about is um, when when Mark and I were going through your shop, we get what you're going for. And every time I see your account, you're getting closer and closer and closer. Yeah, you really are. I, we can see exactly the aesthetic that you're going for. You're going for the kind of... Dark book, yeah. bookstore. I almost want to say like rich guy's book study. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I can smell it. I can yeah. smell your shop. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like... Um, and, and I can see that you get closer and closer and closer yeah, to... Yeah, because you scroll down through here and the, it's everything is bright. You don't have that dark aesthetic yet. You can you can visibly see when you're starting right there. Yeah. You're, you can see when it really starts to hit. And I can tell that you're editing your photos or doing the lighting, trying to accomplish that look every time. What I would recommend for you to do is if, if you're using Lightroom, make sure you're consistently using the same Lightroom presets. You can do, do anything that way. Or make sure that if you're editing specific colors or using vignettes that you're consistent that way at least they all look consistent and then i think you'll really start to nail that i think lightroom for what you're going for would be your best friend yeah lightroom choose one preset and always use that preset if you want to go for that bookish box aesthetic which we'll show you in a minute yeah, um I'll, I'll elaborate a little further use one aesthetic for one kind of picture so if you're doing these like up close book kind of things or the bookshelf the 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 candles make sure that those are all kind of having their own if you're doing more lights lifestyle out in the open kind of stuff like this you can have a slightly different one as long as they're a similar aesthetic but most people choose one lightroom preset that they really like and yeah. stick with it for everything that way it's just one kind of look all the way through yeah another thing is a lot of your photos are very close up um, take back a, up, back up, back way up when you're taking these photos. Uh, Dress it up. Can we pop open Bookish Boxes yeah. tab for a minute? Yes, we can. It's right next to it. Yeah, yeah. we opened this because we looked at this ahead of time to find examples. And I'm pretty sure I linked her the Bookish Box account in the in the past, 
but let's get down to Bookish Box's actual feed. They're one of my favorite examples mm -hmm. of a cohesive, um, you know, cohesive brand. They use Lightroom clearly. They buy a lot of little accents and they almost clutter up their photos, but it's in a very intentional way. We've got a sweater, yep. we've got pumpkins, candles. Hit up your local like dollar or less store yeah. and just go buck wild. Yeah. Take 50 bucks in there and go nuts. And you'll also notice they're taking a step back. They're, they're, there is yeah. a lot of space around these items. And as far as consistency, those two pictures are probably the best. The one there on the right, that's the left, the one on the right. Oh, this one? Yeah, the one on the right. Open that up. That one has that kind of aesthetic that we can see that you're trying to go for. The kind of dark but still, like, comfortable vibe. Mm -hmm. And the other one that's really popular in the kind of industry that you're going for is this. Flat lay. Well, it's flat lay, but it's also extremely, like, over-contrasted, washed out, kind of, but intentionally washed out, except for the product that they've put in here. They've made the cover not so washed out, but the whole rest of the picture is severely over or under contrasted. I don't know what the right terminology is, but yeah. Yeah, so just get a little bit more cohesive. I keep working at it because I keep seeing you. You're getting closer and closer and closer to it. It looks good. Yeah. We're not saying that it looks bad. Your, your Instagram looks really good for what you're trying to accomplish. We can see what you're going for. Yeah. We can tell, but it's just little nitpicky things. We can tell what you're selling up here yeah, exactly yeah. what you're doing link tree here's an example of a link tree yep. for what we were talking about earlier you can go in and you can have all your love, different links love your vip group secret secret society discount love that that's i love the color that you're going here you're going for the newsprint the news newsprint the kind of unbleached paper kind of mm -hmm. yeah all right buy bookish box all right Samantha. 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 Hey, Samantha. Um, so a couple quick points. We already touched on it once. Conway sta Stamping. Don't put the, the brand name in here. Put, put what you do. Put what you do. They can see what your brand name is. Um, I would make sure that you're putting what you do in here. Another thing that I think would really um, help your brand is I know that you have like a very consistent theme going on. Yeah, and so, we can see that. So what I'm going to say is going to sound kind of controversial in terms of what I have taught you in Handmade Alpha Academy, because you are in Handmade Alpha Academy, but please be abstract in your thought process as I explain this. Cohesion is important, and there is no doubting that you have cohesion. You're to, at to the extreme, for sure. Your Etsy shop is a brilliant example of a beautifully cohesive shop. However, for Instagram, I would really like to see you not have a photo in this big white box with your logo and an explanation. Mm -hmm. I would much prefer that your photo come all the way to the perimeter. Or at least a lot closer because you're getting rid of a lot of real estate there. Yeah, I would much prefer you not have your photos in a box with the giant logo mm -hmm. um, because it looks good, but most people aren't seeing your account via your feed. They're not or via your page. No. And when they scroll past those products exactly like that, it's going to kind of mesh in with all of the other ad stuff that people are trying to get sold to from Instagram. Yeah. What I would really like to see is more of the natural photos without the borders. Mm -hmm. um, or if you want to keep the blue around the edge for the sake of remaining consistent because you have a lot of posts and I wouldn't want to mess up your flow, I would say get rid of the logo and um, try to stretch your photo to that perimeter and then make sure that if you want to put the William uh, Shakespeare, like if you want to put the That's references, fine. put those in your caption instead. Mm -hmm. um, you want that and photo if, to take up lots of space. And if you really want to have your your brand name and everything else on there, get yourself the the actual PNG of it and slap it on there without having to have it on a white background. You can find somewhere in an image to slap it. And if you can't, it doesn't have to be there. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's an over-branding issue yeah that i see it's brilliantly done i see exactly what you were going for but the fact there are no engagements on this no comments there's nothing nobody's nobody's liked it three mm -hmm. two comments three one comment one yeah. favorite you're, you're not selling your product on instagram you're selling your brand 
Yeah. So it's almost like you've taken everything that I've said and done so beautifully, but this is over development of. It's literal. It's too literal for your marketing. And, and your followers are great. Yeah. You've got a ton of followers. But you should be getting way more engagement with this many followers. Um, so. Yeah. And if this is working for you and your thing is just isn't about engagement, if this works and you sell a lot of products based on what you do on Instagram, ignore our advice. If you've already got a raving following that uses this, the shop, obviously ignore this. This is general Instagram advice. Yeah. And I would definitely try to, <clears throat> I know that I, I talk about it a lot, but try to work some more reels in there. Um, mm -hmm. you're, you're obviously going to be doing the, the boot camp. Um, the boot camp starts on the 26th and the boot camp is all about marketing. So I would start when you start doing the boot camp, even if it's just during the duration of the boot camp, test what I teach you in the boot camp with the strategies that I've told you today. Yes. Just for just for a little while, just to see if it makes a difference. If it doesn't make a difference, then don't worry about what I said. Um, but attempt to follow the boot camp, and I want to see where your account is after that, and and where your shop is, because her shop is already insanely successful. Like she makes yeah. tons of sales, especially for the holidays, because her products are highly giftable. But um, it, we're, but your social media is the area that mm -hmm. I think. And we're nitpicking a lot. As yeah, well. yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. It looks fantastic. It's just like I said, it's a little overdeveloped. Mm -hmm. All right, Loganberry Canada. Loganberry Canada. Loganberry Canada. Uh, so, um, tiny. Are you, are you from Loganberry Canada, or is okay. that your brand? So, <laughs> tiny clothing, big adventures. That's super cute. I assume Love that's. It. I assume that's your tagline, but since it's tiny clothing i'm assuming that it's not tiny like extra small for small dogs or small for small people small people um well technically it is it is for small people small baby people um i would make sure that you are putting in here children's blah 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 clothing or mm -hmm. clothing for blah 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 uh don't worry about putting your brand name in here it's already up here mm -hmm. i love your logo i love i love the image you're using for your logo. like watercolor berries mm -hmm. very cute um, so one thing that Mark and I noticed was that there is a disconnect that starts right about here. So right about here, I see really beautiful photos, decent engagement on your photos. Um, I would love to see you get some Instagram reels in here. That's what's going to get you new followers. If and this you can... is what I'm talking about. I don't know if you used a Lightroom preset. It sure as heck looks like you did, or you're just super good at editing your photos to look exactly the same, but this is exactly what I'm talking about. Everything's consistent. It doesn't matter that the colors in every single one of these pictures are dramatically different. It looks like they're from the same stock, right? Like yeah. they look like they were taken at the same time with the same lighting and they're super crisp clear this but, is what i mean by that but then right here like right about here it stops and it changes to something else and it's not cohesive anymore and honestly there's so many things here that aren't what you sell that right here i thought you made the, okay she sells baby headbands wait she sells what are these bib bib bandanas wait she sells Little romperoos. Wait, she sells sweaters. Wait, she sells blankets. Wait, she sells hats. And then I got down here and I was like, okay. Okay, so I know exactly what you do. Gotcha. So every once in a while, I recommend going through, and I do this. I go through my Instagram account. Audit. Audit it. You go through, you pull up your feed, and you play a game of what doesn't belong. One of these things is not like the other. And then you get rid of it. And it doesn't have any damage to your account. It's not like, you know, it's not like a platform where if mm -hmm. you d delete a piece of content that it, it hurts your account at all. Not at um, all. Just go through every once in a while because it's not showing up in anybody's feed anymore. It's it's just on your profile. Get rid of old content that you don't need anymore that doesn't fit your aesthetic. I really loved this vibe. This is a trendy, um, very... It's in and you got fall coming up. You take this and slap some fall colors and backgrounds in here, mm -hmm. it's going to be bangers. All bangers. Oops, all bangers. Oops, all bangers. Yeah. So when was this posted? August 23rd. It doesn't look like you've posted anything in a while. Does Instagram show them in order? Pretty sure yes. they do. They're chronological. Well, you best get back on it. August 8th. Yeah. Yeah, so you are way inconsistent. Yeah, so uh, down below, guys, there is a free 30-day Instagram challenge kit 
That includes a posting schedule. That includes um, exactly what type of content you should be posting each day. It has a bunch of freebies to help you create that content. I highly recommend uh, going down and grabbing that and utilizing that to grow your accounts because consistency is key when it comes to social media marketing. Dang. What? Yeah, and you stop po posting in like early August. Look at that, you got 8,000 views. People love uh, order packing Oh, uh, they videos. do, they love that stuff. Your natural, showing your natchy lifestyle. Pretty cohesive. Um, aesthetic here a little there's a couple things that are kind of scattered you want to try to stay topically consistent try not to throw things in the lifestyle's fine but, but, just not too much yeah but for the most part i'm i know what you're about so that's what matters yeah this isn't inconsistent enough that it matters everybody yeah. drinks coffee but you can tell the coffee trend kind of died but yeah no the whatever however you got this one that was that was a banger if you the thing is we had something like this similar happen when you have explosive growth and you have something ex anything explosive happen roll with it good god roll with it what continue day did that, what day did she publish august that? 13th i think so if that did well on august 13th and i'd you, have been you keep feeding that machine feed it feed it feed it feed it feed it feed it yeah i we just had a youtube video go viral a few weeks ago it's likely how most of you who are watching right now found a us a lot of you new guys yeah. yeah it was the etsy trends video for the holidays that went actual viral for our channel yeah 60k views in a couple days like that's that's insane and we've and we put in a lot of work into our videos but after that we're making sure that everything is on point the audio is on point the video is on point the topics are on point everything is great right as soon ride that ride the wave if a wave hits you it's gonna fall eventually but ride it until it does yeah and and stick with winners too if you mm -hmm. know that videos of you packing orders are bringing in people and getting people to watch your content keep doing it. keep doing that if you hit a slow period like after the holidays and you want to get more creative and experiment um uh, you know that that's a good time to test things that maybe not won't yep. get the views but it's something that you want to try um but yeah so i would just recommend uh Trying to get a little bit more consistent. Nice link tree. And you're, the thing is, you're great with your friggin' branding. Yeah. Get back on it. Get back on it. I'm telling you to. Very, very nice photos. Do it. Get back on it, Instagram. Drink some water. All right. <laughs> <laughs> to drink some water. <laughs> drink, drink a glass of water. Get back on your Instagram. All right. Tara. There you go. You may have this. Once again. Um, Been a while, around for a while. 1,270 posts. Yeah. So... Keyword optimize, you are selling um, book design and stationery. Um, I don't know what... So do you do book covers? These things are very different. This isn't very topically consistent. Gra graphic designer. Yeah, but book design, art, adventures, life. I, I'm just saying that... I would separate your book cover design because I'm I have a published book... Um, my my editor Michelle Badger at Four Eye Books, she's in the bookish industry, and as somebody who often does look for artists for my books for my book covers, um, if I went to your account and I saw these items, you would not be my first pick for a book cover because I would assume that that's not your primary focus. Mm -hmm. These aren't topically consistent themes. I would try to separate these. Um, I would yeah. make one account for your bookish things. That way you can just go all out on that. Keep all of the little, um, the stationery and stickers and things like that. I would keep those together because the stationery items, you've got this on brand background. You've got reels. You've got and your reviews. And then you're slapping your book stuff in here. It's, it's a very... It, common thing with business where you're like great at many master of nothing yeah kind of concept where you're good at doing a lot of different things but you're not specifically letting the business ride whatever you want it to be so either go with one thing or the other if you want to occasionally post something in your reels or whatever whatever yeah. that's fine but i would i would probably try to stick consistent if you could and you've got separations here with your book design art adventures life yeah but all that kind of stuff but most people aren't clicking those and i'll be honest when i first got to your account like i didn't look at this i just scrolled down and i went okay so she sells like little stickers and pins that's cool is this like one of her kids why is she showing me this yeah. what and i didn't understand that you designed this book cover 
it took me a minute. So these things don't fit with the aesthetic that you've built and your aesthetic is great. Put these somewhere else because they're not carrying the weight of your, your feed. No. You've only got five engagements there, um, two there, three. So yeah, I, I would, whoop. Oh, no. oh, it worked. It worked. That was weird. Yeah. What are your reels like? They're cute. I wish I could see your caption. For some reason, Instagram's bugging out. It's being booty. It is what it is. Yeah. So topical consistency. It helps the algorithm identify what you want to be known for so that they're showing you to the right people on mm -hmm. Instagram. Uh, Instagram has an algorithm just like Etsy has an algorithm. You want to make sure that you're being consistent in what you want to be known for and for the sake of your customers. Like I said, I got to your account. I didn't know why there was a book about numbers. I, <laughs> I was very confused until I, you know, actually spent some time reading and browsing and then I figured it out. But people aren't going to give you that time. They're just going to take no. a glance and be done with it. So, all right. Next, next. one. Ah, uh, Christina. Christina, Christina. So, Christina, um, get your, 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 more about your business in here. And Mark and I were talking. We know that um, you've been having some issues with traffic flow. I know... I think that we had to talk about this. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I feel like you told me once that you don't want to use the term kawaii for some reason. Maybe I'm wrong. I might, I might just be making this up. We might just be making that up, yeah. But your brand is the definition of kawaii. Like, it is so kawaii. It's, it's, it's just cute. It's so cute. It is so cute. You even have Adventure Time references. Which is like the kawaii show. <laughs> yeah. Um, so my your brand is adorable, and it's not getting enough traffic for how adorable it is. And I really think that positioning is going to be your key, especially as you work mm -hmm. through the boot camp, because I know you're in HAA too. I would really... Really, just for the holidays, just to experiment during the boot camp. If it doesn't work, then you can let me know and, and you can abort mission. Rather than cute and whimsical art on home decor and gifts, I would do kawaii and whimsical art. Or just kawaii art. Kawaii art on home decor. Whimsical gift. kawaii art on home decor. Lean into it just to experiment with it, just to see. Um, especially whimsical kawaii home decor. Especially with your reels, mm -hmm. like try to get some of those kawaii themed keywords, because here's the thing, right? I'm in the nerdy demographic. Mr. Moore just got me. You got me a squishable. Yeah. Yeah. We're nerds. We're, we. It is what it is. I'm, I'm, I am in your demographic. Your products are so flipping cute. Embrace it. Embrace what I think you're known for. And what I'm sure anybody who's watching the, the live stream right now, even though it's not live, if you agree that, you know, if you're in the kawaii audience and you agree that these little ghosts are absolutely kawaii, like post it in the chat. Um, it's just the terminology that I would use. And if it's the terminology that I would use, it's probably the terminology your target customers are using. I don't search for cute mm -hmm. and whimsical art. I search for kawaii art. Test it, experiment with it because your products are adorable. Especially um, with the kawaii stuff too. Kawaii yourself up, get energetic, and get yourself on yeah, camera. Yeah, look, you got a Gur shirt on. Come, Come on. on. Do some, Super cute. Do some friggin' cute. Get on, get on camera and be hyper. Yeah. Your your content. You can take your take your excuse the drone battery and the little dinosaur that I have with it. But get on camera, do crazy crap. Yeah. You know. You don't have to do that if you don't. You don't, you don't have to, but you should. Yeah, you don't. You don't have to do that if you don't want to be on camera. But but you should be on camera. But your products are cute, and it, that's people. Want, that's people that like this kind of product like to see that kind of stuff. That's just how it is. Yeah, yeah. There, you've got so many. Um, you have so many cute things, and one thing I will say is with reels like these, cut. Cut, 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 cut. Mm -hmm. Clip them, clip them, clip them. Clip them so it's yeah. action, action, action. Bang, 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 bang. And the only reason I say the high energy is because the fan base that follows this kind of stuff is is most of the content that you digest mm -hmm. is extremely high energy, fast, crazy, hyper music. And yeah. 
Yeah. I wish I had like somebody to reference. Um, you can, <laughs> we don't follow a lot of people that do this kind of stuff. So. In terms of brands, I believe I've told you this before. Maybe it was somebody else. I can't remember. But Tasty Peach Studio, she's a great example. She's not an Etsy seller. She's she's a pretty big brand that I've shopped from in the past. Tasty Peach Studio, she's got a really defined aesthetic where she's kind of in that kawaii in-between audience, but she embraces the kawaii keywords. Mm -hmm. I would check out her feed. Um, and I, I like that. You know what makes you kind of unique is that you have these really cute designs, but it's not pink. And I know that that sounds weird, but any kawaii themed brand that I follow, it's all pink. And I kind of like that you do the teal. So it's you, different. It's different. It's unexpected. And I like that you do kind of the the the, the black cat and the moons as your theme. I think that you could fully embrace this as being like I do too the blue side of kawaii rather than that mm -hmm. bubblegum pink side. It's all bubblegum pink. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that if that's what you do. No, no, not at all. I love the I love the uh, the typewriter style keycaps, by the mm. way. I think Logitech makes a keyboard that has those. All right. What do we got all next? Right. The crystal stash. Um so we actually, Nicole, <laughs> I, I love that your name's right there. We actually really uh, liked your mm -hmm. aesthetic, um, crystal shop. And Rock Lover, so that's fantastic. You've got some keywords in there. Uh, you've got your link tree. I love your highlight covers with the agate. with the agate on there. That's very cool. Um, very cohesive. Looks really nice. I'm. I think that your overall aesthetic Kate. is great. Kate. <laughs> it looks kind of like bubbers. Yeah, and I mean, I think that it looks pretty. good. Good. I feel like there was a specific note that we had for her. Oh my god. There we go. It's just not liking it. Oh, I remember what it was. It was one of these reels that we clicked on. You're not in reels. I know, but I think it was I don't think it was this one. One of your reels we clicked on and Why don't you go to reels? Yeah, you're right. I don't think it was that one. No. I think it was that one. Was it this one? I really like these. Um, these reels tend to do well. Unfortunately, I'm not able to see your actual captioning. I would look at what other big crystal shops are doing for their captions. A lot of them are going to be very specific in the keywords that they're using. So you can kind of snag some of their keywords. You had one reel, though, and I don't know where it is. But it, it was constant, like, change, 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 change. But it was... It was, like, phone screen the whole time. It was, like, epileptic seizure inducing. I just can't remember which... Was it one of the crystal inflation ones? No. I can't remember. I can't remember. We, but, we just clicked a random one, and it was, like... Yeah. It was real bad. Like, it was constant flash. Yeah, it was... It was just be careful with that. Yeah, it was too it was too much. So just be careful with how much flashing you have going on the screen. Um, I try to not put anything in my videos that flash. That did really well. Oh, that's super cute. That's super cute. But yeah, overall, I think the main reason that we wanted to show off your shop was just to show how nice and cohesive it was. Um, I can see that a lot. <laughs> Seems like you need to do more uh, reels with crystal squirrels because they <laughs> always get... A lot of friggin' views. Yeah. Um, I would do a deep dive into some of the larger crystal shops. They don't need to be Etsy. Uh, just do a deep dive and see what type of um, captions they're adding into their reels because you could totally ride that trend wave. But overall, I think that the main point that we wanted to get across with your account was that it's very aesthetically pleasing and very cohesive. Yes. All right. Dips. Not just a dip. <laughs> Not just a dip. Not just a dip. Which is uh, crazy because this clearly looks like a bunch of dip. Yeah, it looks like a lot of dip. Um, so I love your account. I want to see more of the dip made. Where's the dip? I'm not, I know that it's not just a dip. It's not just about the dip. We get it. But, you clearly say that. But you say amazing dips that make the best everything. I want to see more dip. Where's the dip? There's not enough. Here's a dip. There's the dip. And then I'm looking and I'm seeing lots of things. There's a dip. There's a dip. There's, There's a, a dip mix. Where's the dip? There's a dip mix. I want to see more 
dip that makes me want to buy your I don't want I don't care what a packet looks Scroll like. Scroll into the top. I don't care what a packet looks like because a packet uh, doesn't make me hungry. I want to see the completed dip because that's what's going to make me hungry and that's what's going to make me buy. So, yes, I, that this this immediately drew my eye. I was like, "Oh my god, I want that." Is that like a is that like a red pepper jam on top? Oh my god, I don't know. There's a pineapple in the background, so I'm assuming this is like pineapple Pe whip or something maybe. I don't know. It looks so good. See, I, we haven't had dinner yet and the I'm corn, starving. The corn, the fry. See, the food is what I want to see. Um can you pull up Flavor God's account for her real yeah, quick? Yeah, I'm going to pull off the, that because I don't know what's in my... In your searches? In my search history here. <laughs> Kanye West for some reason. Oh, because he posted about Kim taking huge dumps and I was trying to... <laughs> that's right. I was trying to find it. If you don't know what we're talking about, that's probably for the best. <laughs> Kanye, he's a... He said, he said she takes like the biggest dumps, like way more than a normal person. <laughs> I think he deleted it because I can't find it. But oh, anyway, man. Oh, all right, dear. Flavor God. Flavor God is a great example of He's, a brand we, that will make you hungry. Yeah, we've been following these guys since before they were a huge company. I don't literally follow them, but we have been buying their products. I do. You don't follow them? No. Flavor God makes me hungry. Um, I recommend following them if you create anything in the food department. That's probably why they, I quit following them. They make seasoning, right? They they do dry seasoning. Um, there is low salt, keto, paleo. They've got all they do every They do everything. But when you go to their feed... <gasps> What is that? Bacon and cheese covered pickles? Okay, we gotta hurry it, up and get off this topic. It's not about the bottles of the seasoning. It's about the food they're going on. You're, make people hungry, dude. Make people hungry, but also make it something where they need your product to make it. Yeah. Always. And Look then at that. Show more of those reels of you making the dips. If I see a video of a good tasty dip. You're I'm, making me hungry and it makes me want to buy your product. Exactly. So our biggest advice to you more food food we're in america people like to eat here take advantage of that make, for sure make more dip i wanted to look at just to see if she did anything he or she actually didn't pay attention to what the name was i don't think there was a name included they yeah uh reels i wanted to see if there were any reels because if there aren't reels of you making food in Ooh, here first one Ooh, 16 good god look at that see this is this work, a tutorial? See, you're in America. You got mayonnaise and, and cream. Yeah. Is it cream? Sour cream. Cream fish. Cream fish. See, this is your best piece of content that you've made seven <laughs> days ago. It's just you mixing two things in a packet of your stuff together. This was no effort on your part. Do more of this. Do more of this. Make your, these quick little, look at this. What is it, a pie? Mm. Are you just cutting it? Is that the whole video? Is you, is cut you just get 4,464 4, people watch you cut a piece of pie. They're hungry. Give the people what they want. I'm hungry. Give me what I want. What I really, really want. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Don't bite your lip, you weirdo. Here's the thing. I'm we're, not going to edit that out either. We're we're alone. So we're, we're interacting the way. <laughs> I've got to close this page. I'm so hungry. <laughs> I was actually, see, you got me. You got I haven't had dinner and you got me. Okay. Wheatland Avenue home. Wheatland. Are you in Wheatland, California? Because we live right up the street from you. I'm sure that there's a lot of Wheatland. I'm sure there's a lot of Wheatlands, yes. All right. So um, once again, keyword optimize this. Handcrafted and laser engraved or engraved home decor. Englaved. Uh, enclaved. Um, get those keywords in here. Get it in there. Yep. And one that really irked me, you have the Etsy link to Etsy.com, but not the link to your shop. You just you just linked Etsy. Your shop isn't there. That's actually why we picked you. Yeah. We picked you as a as a just to let you know that if I click on this, it just takes me to Etsy. You have to do Etsy.com slash shop slash your shop name. <laughs> so yeah. make sure that you do that because otherwise you're just sending them to Etsy. Or alternatively, get a link tree. And you can link your Instagram, Facebook, and everything else on there, like like we've been recommending from the from the beginning. Link tree's great. Yeah. So you're talking about home decor. These are all s'more sticks. Yeah. None of that's home decor. None of these are home decor. Um, is the it? Coaster. I think those are coasters down below. Here. Oh, that's the measuring tape. That's not home decor either. That's not home decor. Could you say gifts? Uh, Laser handcraft. engraved gifts. Yeah, gifts for any occasion. Um, I'm still not seeing home decor. Mm -mm. Okay. There's. Yeah. Th this is home decor. That's home decor, yep. Okay. There's a little bit of home decor. 
these are all these are cool. Um, those are actually really dope. Yeah, those are really really neat. Um, if you were only doing the um, the sheet music, like wall hangers. That would be like a really cool niche on its own. I actually really like that by itself. That could be a whole brand on its own. And obviously with music, make sure that the music, even if it's not the music itself, the music notes, that's still, make sure you're not using something that's not in the open domain. Public domain. Public domain, yeah. Um, But I would really work on defining what you are. What is your brand? Um, Because I see the the cohesive factor is wood. You Mm -hmm. You have nothing about wood in here. You just have laser engraved. Um, I, I, me as a shopper, I'm not going to search laser engraved. I'm going to search for wood. I'm not going to search for laser engraved home decor. I'm going to search for wood home decor. Some people do search. It's it's becoming more of a trendy thing, but it's not trendy enough that I would focus on it mm-hmm. yet. Yeah, not yet. Wood wood is the cohesive factor here. Mm-hmm. Laser engraved is starting to become popular because it is it's exact Mm -hmm. whereas doing something like hand burning a piece of wood is not perfect or exact some people are they really like that bougie perfectly cut stuff yeah um personalized is also a buzzword on etsy and that's a big one personalized custom personalized hand handcrafted and personalized wood home or wood gifts i would say is more a more accurate Um, I'm sure you can figure something out that's a little more specific. Yeah, and then once you figure it out, put it up here, not so much down here. Um, not so much. Not so much. Let's look at I no. get Instagram. Not. Instagram's fighting with me. All right. Uh, get some hashtags in these. This was eight weeks ago, so it's been a while. You have not posted in forever. Post. You got to post frequently. Um there is nothing, there is no keyword optimization. There's not a single word here that you want no, to be that's known. all just talking about yourself. Yeah, you've got to keyword optimize these reels to get them seen. Um, and this is the last thing you posted, and it was eight weeks ago. I, have, I wouldn't follow a page if I looked at their account and they, and they hadn't posted in eight weeks. I would assume that they... There's no point. Yeah, I would assume that, they, that they're that they not posting anymore. Yeah, and I eight, would, eight weeks for most people seems abandoned. Yeah, so... Once a week at a minimum. Assuming that you didn't join the uh, the Alpha Holiday Boot Camp. If you did, we're going to work on this exact thing. If not, the free Instagram challenge kit is down below. Download that and start using it in time for the holidays. Assuming that you don't have like a super... Because I can't go to your Etsy shop because it's not mm-hmm. there. But assuming that you don't already have like a super viral Etsy brand and you you know, you know don't need the customers. If you actually need those, those customers, especially for the holidays... You've got to get more consistent on this account. <laughs> um, and like I said, there is that Instagram challenge kit is going to teach you exactly when to post, what to post, how frequently to post. It's going to be a huge help. So grab that and really buckle down, especially really do it. October. I want to see every single person who is unhappy with their sales and unhappy with their uh, their marketing and unhappy with you know their traffic. And unhappy with their number of followers on Instagram, make make me big for a minute. I'm, I'm, make me big. She's going at it. If you are not doing the holiday boot camp with me, because the holiday boot camp, you you were that's, gonna cover that. That's fine. It's it's not free. Yeah. If you're not doing the holiday boot camp, and you're not happy with your sales, and you're not happy with your number of followers on Instagram, and you want to make sure that you're ready for the holiday season, I want you to get that 30 day challenge kit. I want you to start it on October 1st. I want you to stay consistent with it. And then after the 30 days, which would be October 30th, I don't want you to stop. I want you to continue and I want you to keep posting until the Cyber Week, which is going to be, you know, Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. Black Friday, Cyber, uh, and, and Small is, Business Saturday, and Cyber this Monday. this is one of the easiest seasons for you to really start pushing for this stuff, especially with fall and Halloween. Well, and like, of, it's so easy to come up with content for that. And one of the things that we're going to cover during the boot camp, spoiler alert, is that people are more susceptible to marketing right now, next month, and in November than any other time of year. So if you can it's get them... It's nesting season. People are nesting. Well, not to mention... They're not just looking at ads and scrolling by them. They're, They're look- looking for things for others. Exactly. Others and themselves. They've got kids that just started college a couple of months ago. They've got 
you know, they're getting married. People are getting married most of the time in the fall. People don't like getting married in the summer. It's hot, it's hot. It sucks. Most people are looking for gifts. It's the season for it. Yeah. Christmas is coming up. It's fall. You, do you guys know that little window? Have you guys ever picked raspberries? And you know there's that, like, that, like two-week period where you can pick those raspberries before they get funky, mm -hmm. but you have to be ready for that two-week period, right? We're about to hit that, that berry picking season where... It is going to be very, very easy to grow if you actually optimize for growth. If you don't, you're not going to grow. That challenge kit is based on what Instagram actually tells us that we need to do to grow. It's also what the what the Alpha Holiday Boot Camp is going to be based around. Yep. So make sure that you take that challenge. Do um, it. I think that I think that I've I've yelled enough. Yell. I mean, Yell some more. You know what? This is. You guys get the more authentic me when we're not live, I feel like. Because mm -hmm. my YouTube videos are scripted. Um, these are unscripted. But when you're live, I feel like I got to talk to you and interact. And me. But with these, I'm just like, I'm just, I'm myself. I was going to suggest these because I followed this one. But that's fine. Oh, that's fine. Do, 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 do. Screen share. All right. Um, we are up. I think that the only reason we picked this one is because we liked it so much. Are you smoking a joint in your picture? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I love it. I don't think that's her picture. Are you lighting that, it with that your... That looks like a, it's, it's like... <laughs> that's pretty sick. <laughs> that's, that's pretty sick. With the, the, wiggity, wiggity. The, the, the big, huge torch. We'll assume it's legal and that it's like Delta 9 or something like that and you're not breaking any laws. <laughs> So we can leave it in the video. I'm you just hear saying, that, YouTube? Nothing illegal here. I'm just saying it's super hardcore that you're like leaning into this giant fiery torch, if that's you. Um, anyway, so we loved the aesthetic of your account. I don't like the blue backgrounds, I'll be honest, because I don't think that they fit the aesthetic that you've built. But I see what you were going for They're with navel. the... Right. I, I. It's water. Were you confused by that? No, I get it. I said I get it because there's an anchor and stuff. Uh-huh. Um, but overall, I love this aesthetic. I love that you've incorporated in, like, a couple little natural photos. It, hey. Hey. That's a, that's an alpha. And that's also copyright content. Ah. You stinker. You stinker. We missed it. Yeah. You stinker. Well, just be careful. Um, but overall, we really like the overall aesthetic of your account. Um, oh my God, we get it. There we go. I think that once again, it was an issue with your reels not being captioned very well. Oh, here we go. Find silver pendant that become heirloom jewelry. Um, so it's cool. Get me some more keywords in here. Yeah, for sure. Get this, some stuff in there. This was your most watched reel of everything that you've you've posted. And I think the reason is that this right here, jewelry that tells your story, it makes me curious. Mm -hmm. This is a good note for everybody. Um, the reel that we posted that went viral, it had, as of yesterday, 222,000 views. Mm -hmm. It started with uh, the words, we left the house and didn't even realize, dot, dot, dot. Yeah, the, uh, and that's something you're starting to see a lot more is catching people before they're actually enthralled with the content. So we, we talked about this with YouTube. Uh, a week or two ago after watching a Drew Gooden video talking about how YouTubers, the big YouTubers, you'll notice a lot you of the times, a lot of the times you'll start videos and they're already in the middle of saying a word. There is no space from the time no, you I start. No, I told you that. I just said we had oh, a discussion about it. Got it. You're being spicy. Well, you're making me angry. Um, don't go to my feed. What are you doing? Just keep talking. Oh, we're not. We're not full screened. But anyway, yeah, again, catching people before they're actually enthralled in the content. So if you can put something on there that catches people's eye, makes them want to actually click on it and see what the heck you're talking about, that that's a good way to go. Yeah, yeah. Um, so screen. this is my personal account. It's not topically consistent because it's just my everything account. So this is not my... This is not our business account. This is not our business account. But <laughs> we had... Oh my God! Yeah, two hundred and forty-three thousand. 
And, and the, it's so stupid that there's no, it's nothing. It only blew up because it says we left or we left the house and didn't even realize. And everybody's like, oh, my God, did they leave the house and forget their pants? Did they leave the house and forget their dog? Did they like what did they forget? It and, doesn't capture audio. So you're good. And it's just it's nothing. It's literally nothing. It's th that's it. That's we, the whole. That's the whole reel. We but and it went literally viral. Confuse them, confuse them. Put something in here that makes them mm -hmm. say, "Oh my God, what is what's going to happen? What what is it?" Um, and make sure that you're actually like making the thumbnail when you can select what your thumbnail is going to be. Make that whatever the most curious part of it is. So that's what is going to make people actually watch it. If you look at all my other ones. It's just her being stupid. It is. It's just me being silly. It's me being silly in all of them. Yeah, it's all just me being silly. Anyway. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> we only picked this one because we really like it. Yeah, we picked this one because it's nice. Your your brand immediately hits us in the face. He like, was, he's like, I know her branding colors. They punched me in the face. Exactly. I know exactly what you're Ooh, going Ooh, I like for. how we went to, like, cow black and white, too. Yes. Vibin' and thriving. I can see that you did your own mock-ups. You kind of, like, started, like, with this color aesthetic, and then you, I can see where you started to evolve, and I love it. Little, um, little pro tip, if you want these to be a little more less looking like their mock-ups, throw, like, a couple small percent of transparency on them so you have that, like, natural in-person fade to the photos. Because I can very, very easily tell maybe that the these newer are mock-ups. Maybe the newer ones yeah, are less. Yeah, I, I guess I could pay a little more attention. These are a little... The colors are a little easier to do. Click on one. Are that's, they mock-ups? That's not too bad. Those are definitely mock-ups. I don't know. I see a wrinkle in the N in season. Yeah, I could be wrong. The earlier ones are definitely mock-ups. You can 100% tell that these are mock-ups. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely a mock-up. Unless not, no, no, they're not actually. It might just be maybe it's the preset she's using. See, this, this one looked like a mock-up to me. That one up there though, the be kind, be a kind human. Mm -hmm. That one is. I like how it's kind of faded. It it makes it seem more realistic. Well, if it's not a mock-up, then the black on these shirts is like the most perfect black ever maybe printed. She's so con congratulations. Maybe it's on. her contrast. She's just upped her. Yeah, contrast. it very well could be. It does look like the photos are consistent. I'm not crap. Oh, this nitpicking. I'm not crapping on we your stuff even, at all. We didn't even pick you to nitpick. We picked you because it immediately was like, whoa. Perfect. Um, I, I honestly have no critiques. I love that you have an organized uh, grid. Your grid looks great. I love that you've pinned three of your most important, if you look at her. I want to see what BTS is. Like the. I'm like, trying to see if like she's. Like the boy band? Yeah, but that might just be bait. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe she put BTS and it's something that. Well, I'm assuming that it's not. Well, I'm, it doesn't matter because it's not going to load anyway. I'm assuming that it stands. Good vibes for, only. This stands for something else. Get more reels. Your brand is so aesthetic. Yes. Girl, you've got such an aesthetic See, brand. She, re, she just, like, started, I think. No, that was somebody else. April 10th. So it's still relatively new. Yeah. It's definitely not a lot for starting in, a, for in, starting in April, but still not bad. Anyway, no, not at all. I followed you because I have a friend that does Twitch. We could kind of do Twitch sometimes. Sometimes. From time to time. All right, we followed your brand in particular because it was just so darn... Super hella cute. Cute. Um, we actually picked your brand because I wanted to talk about how defined your brand image is. It was her that... How specific, how specific your products are. Your niche is so niche that I'm so impressed. Um, so for those of you who don't know... You get little subscriber badges, or you can set subscriber badges on Twitch, so that on, on a lot of different streaming platforms. Yeah. So, for example, when someone subscribes to our Twitch, we get a little, we get bubbers in a little pop-up box that says "sub for sub for bubs," mm -hmm. and it like glitches around the screen. Um, and she sells little subscriber badge packs, and I love the frames around your photos. It's so aesthetic. It yeah. looks super cute. I love it. Um, click on one of her. I was gonna see if which one was the most successful. I think it was this one up here. Yeah, people are digging the skulls. They're clearly digging the skulls. 
Oh, oh that's yeah. so cute. I love it. Can you, um, you should do some. Look at this. You're doing the Instagram challenge, aren't you? It looks like it. You should um, show off those emotes, like, actually. Oh, that's cute. Show them actually going off. You know what I mean? Like, do you have a Twitch channel? Or could you have a friend? Um, maybe. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming you probably have a Twitch channel if you're selling, if you're selling these. Maybe have somebody set them. That way you can screen record them going off. I think that that would be really cute. Um, but obviously your target audience is going to know. They're going to know what you do. They're going to see mm -hmm. this and immediately know, okay, that, that makes sense. We knew. We saw it and we were like, oh, wow. So I'm doing the thing that I do on the internet. You've got your reflections in here. I'm trying to see if you left anything you shouldn't have. He always I always do that. Anytime there's a reflection, I'm like, what did you do? What have you done? Who'd you kill? Who'd All you right. kill? <laughs> We're, we are at the end. I'm ready to eat dinner. Yeah, guys. Y'all shops look, or shops, Instagram accounts looked great. There was nothing inherently bad about any of them. No, no, there there really wasn't. And, um, you know, the, the, the main thing with Instagram, and I talk about this in the Instagram challenge kit. There's a video that comes with that. The main thing about Instagram is that we want to make sure that we're being topically consistent. That way Instagram's algorithm knows what we want to be all about. That way they're showing us to the right people. We want to make sure that we're keyword optimizing our nameplate, which is where it says name when you edit your bio, mm -hmm. and our reels captions in particular. We want to make sure that we are um, creating reels first and foremost, but making sure that we're creating reels that are short and snappy and create intrigue. My The reel that we just showed you was five second, seconds long, the one that went viral on my mm -hmm. on my. Um, personal account for no reason whatsoever just silliness um but you know it was one of those unexpected things so and and you know what i keyword optimize that for couple couple goals and couple goals couple couples and things like that i was like using keywords related to couples and it, it took off so just being concise um and and not over engineering your branding either not putting your logo everywhere not not over branding yourself you know little borders are fine um samantha that's why i said to that your your teal border was fine i don't i don't think you should get rid of it i actually like the borders that kind of define you know what the branding colors are i really like the grid patterns even more where it's product and then you throw in like yeah. in that perfect grid you yeah, throw really in a piece like of branding too. um but overall it's really just about making sure that you're checking all the boxes and doing what Instagram tells us to do. I, I know that it sounds crazy. Um, if you follow Instagram on Instagram. <laughs> follow them on their own platforms. Like yeah. it's following Tom on MySpace. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Instagram actually will tell you the things that you need to be doing. Um, they're pretty good about that. I can't remember if Insta if it's Instagram themselves or if they have like a special creator, creative account. I don't know. I can't remember offhand. Doesn't but matter. Guys, thanks for hanging out with us. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up uh, and, you know, be nice to us for not being here because mm -hmm. we're currently having fun. Actually, we're, we're currently driving. Driving. Yeah, when you're watching this, we'll be drive. We'll we'll probably be just leaving the house when they start. Well, when they finish it, we'll be about halfway there. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, subscribe. Like it. Leave a comment, and we'll see you guys next week for the Friday Bean. And for those of you who are doing the boot camp, we will be back on Monday. It should be open mm -hmm. Monday at midnight, but if you need help, if you have a question for us, if you send us an email, probably won't be able to get back to you nope. until Monday. If you have trouble accessing the boot camp, uh, go ahead and send us an email, and we'll try to get to you sooner. We will have my laptop yes. with us. Don't freak out if the page isn't available immediately at 12.01 a.m. on Monday. I have it set to drip feed, but tech happens. I will be sitting on a laptop in a parking lot at a concert <laughs> to make sure that that page is live. So give me like 10 minutes if it doesn't automatically go live. Um, but it should, should everything's set up. It should work fine. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys later. Awesome. Bye, guys.